Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Russell and this is Raspberry Rock. Just a short video today, quick video update today. Um, mostly about my ablation procedure <coughs> and some other stuff. Some weird stuff happened. Um, just so you don't have to sit there looking at me for this whole video, I might throw in some old drone footage or something to kind of make it more interesting. We'll see. Um, anyway, yeah, my ablation procedure was uh, last Wednesday on the 21st, not this most recent Wednesday, but yeah, September 21st, um, for atrial fibrillation. Uh, now, if you watched my previous video, um, I talked a little bit about it. What I failed to mention in that video was this was my second ablation procedure. Had uh, My first one was back in 2013, and I was good for a while after that, um, but then it just started, the AFib just started coming back and more and more frequently to the point where I think it was back in May I contacted my cardiologist and said I gotta do something I can't this is happening like uh, like several times a week and by the time I you know got around to actually doing the ablation procedure it was like it was almost constant it was almost constant so anyway um, one thing I didn't know is and I don't know why it wasn't explained to me earlier but just before the procedure on Wednesday when I was in there um, I talked to the cardiologist and he said the second ablation procedure is not like the first the first they go in and they you know they just kind of do a standard um, I forget what it's called they burn those little areas around your capillaries second time they go in they can actually see where the first one wasn't working so well anymore and they can just kind of modify the spots where they could where they could see where the, there would be obvious improvements to the first one so I said oh okay I didn't know that <laughs> good to know um, and afterwards when I came out uh, he said it was a success uh, it looked good and uh, I'm pretty happy to hear that uh, the other thing he said uh, right then and there was I had to stay on my medications for another 12 weeks uh, now if you remember the previous video these medications that I'm currently on are kicking my butt like it's hard to do anything I uh, like have no energy for anything I take 10 steps and I, w I need to sit down kind of thing and I thought the, I thought the uh, I'd, I'd be on those medications for about three or four weeks not 12 weeks that takes me around the end of December and which sucks because this is my favorite time of year here September is my favorite month by far followed closely by October and then April but <laughs> Anyway, 12 weeks is a long time, especially, thankfully, thankfully, I'm two years ahead on firewood. So I have this winter's firewood all set, but I don't have next winter's. I was hoping to get that done um, before the snow fell this year. Anyway, 12 weeks is a long time to feel like you can't do anything every day. Anyway. Um, recovery time was really, really fast. Um, I didn't think it was going to be nearly as fast as, as it was. Um, Al, the man on the street, was supposed to come here for a few days on the Sunday. The, let's see, 21, 22, 23, 24, on the 25th. And a few weeks before the procedure, I contacted him and said, Look, you know what? I don't know what the recovery time is going to be like. Let's put it off. And he said, Yeah, sure. Um, but I was back in the cabin on the Friday, two days later after the procedure. In fact, I live streamed that Friday night. And uh, I was doing great, you know, got up Saturday, I was feeling fine, doing good. And I thought, oh, this is a breeze, uh, man, I shouldn't have put Al off, he could he could totally have come here the next day. But then I woke up Sunday, and I was feeling like dirt, I was feeling like real shit. And I immediately thought, oh, I've got this horrible hangover. Uh, I'd had a few beers the night before, five, I'd had a few beers the night before, so I thought, Okay, that's not, not many, but um, okay, I guess it's a hangover. Um, and then in the afternoon, and I was, you know, spent the day on the couch, and then in the afternoon I started getting the chills, you know, you're sweating and you still get the chills. And I thought, okay, generally you don't get a fever when you're uh, hungover. <laughs> so I, I went and got my handy-handy uh, uh, Weber Instant Read Thermometer, which is turned on somehow. Uh, and took my temperature and I was running 101.3 so I thought oh shit okay <coughs> and I went to my uh, I went to my I wonder if you can see where this is going already 
I went to my uh, my uh, information booklet that I got from the hospital. And one of the things it says is, if you are running a fever within four weeks of your procedure, it could be serious. Um, usually it's the part in your esophagus where they put the pipe in. Um, you could get an infection there, you get a fever, and contact them right away. Or get your butt into the hospital right away. And I said, oh shit, uh, this is a real problem because I can't drive like this. I was I was out of it. I lightheaded, nauseous. I could, you know, I can't walk across the room without kind of, you know, falling over kind of thing. I was in a real, real bad shape, and I called up, I called up City Girl, and I said, "You're gonna have to come get me tomorrow and take me to the hospital." Uh, and it has to be South Lake in, in Newmarket because uh, they're the atrial fibrillation experts. <laughs> the fuck was that? <laughs> uh, as opposed to like Belleville, because I've been in to Belleville before with being an AFib, and they they didn't want to do anything with it, honestly. Anyway, it would have been, it would have been. Uh, anyway, that was the plan, and uh, of course, it, what what it would have meant is she would come here, pick up me and the dogs, take us back there, go to the hospital, whatever. When I'm okay again, she'd have to bring us back because we'd only have one car, right? Anyway, it would have been a pain, but anyway, um, she says to me, so we'd made the plans to do that. She would come pick me up, um, and she said to me, uh, have you checked? Uh, to make sure it's not COVID. I said, oh, that'd be a hell of a coincidence, wouldn't it? <laughs> so I said, okay, I'll check. Well, you know, we'll eliminate that as a possibility at the least, right? And I had some, we had some rapid tests here uh, from when City Girl had COVID. And I did the test and it came back. You see that? Like almost immediately it came out. You're supposed to wait 15 minutes. I had, I didn't have to wait 10 seconds. <laughs> I was like, oh, I've, I have COVID. <coughs> Which makes it hard to talk sometimes. <coughs> anyway, um, <coughs> yeah. I don't know where I got it from, the hospital maybe, or maybe any one of 50 subways that I went to in a couple of weeks before, <laughs> you know, <clears throat> I don't know. <clears throat> uh, so I called up City Girl and I said, okay, it's it's COVID, you don't need to come anymore. <laughs> and now it's just about isolation. Uh, yeah, so I'm I've been isolating for COVID. Um, Sunday morning, it would be the start of my COVID, uh, so my five days of isolation ends tomorrow morning. And Jess is coming tomorrow, too. Jess from Rain Dance Bushcraft. So, nice timing, right? And now, now I'm, it's Thursday now, and I'm 60-70% better. Um, the fever is gone. Oh, thankfully. Uh, also from when City Girl was here with uh, when she had COVID, um, we had a box and a half of Benelin all-in-ones left over. Uh, thankfully, because uh, uh, these got you know these held the fever down and held the symptoms down, and I was only popping the blue ones, the nighttime ones. <laughs> I wake up first thing in the morning, pop two blue ones. <laughs> Try to sleep more. I slept a lot. I'm sure that really helps. And I drank. Drank lots of fluids. I had a, happened to have a lot of Gatorade here because I uh, found it really cheap at uh, Dollarama. So I bought a bunch of them. Uh, way, like a couple of weeks ago, kind of thing. Uh, so I've been doing that and trying to eat, although I've had no appetite. But as I said, I'm, I'm probably 70% now. I'm still a little lightheaded. And I think, from what I've heard, this cough goes on for like weeks. So I'm not looking forward to that. And I got a bit of a runny nose. Uh, <clears throat> like, I haven't taken anything today. I took two blue ones last night. I didn't take anything today. Um, so I'm putting up with some of the symptoms. Uh, I, I could take the, the daytime ones. That's fine. So, yeah, uh, that's pretty much brought you up to date on me and my uh, ablation experience. Oh, well, uh, cut that. 
So as far as uh, the ablation itself goes, um, I haven't had a single irregular heartbeat since uh, since the since the ablation. So for over a week now, a week and a day, I haven't had a single offbeat, which is wonderful. I it's been over a year since I could, you know, since I've had a week of nothing irregular, like not a single irregular, um, <clears throat> like even times like I'm a side sleeper in bed. If I sleep, if I turn to my left side, I'll always get like a few irregular beats as soon as I do that. But now, no, no problem at all. I can sleep any which way I want. So, very interesting. I mean, time will tell, right? Time will tell. As, uh, you know, I, I don't know how long it takes for the areas in your heart to heal. <coughs> and then when I'm off the drugs, you know, how will I be? And then when I start exercising again, you know, how will I be? Time will tell. But for now, fingers crossed, it looks promising. Feels promising. I'm pretty happy about it. Anyway, I don't know if we'll be live streaming uh, Friday night. <clears throat> I kind of want to, and I know Jess wants to. I've been staying away from alcohol this week, just focused on getting healthy sleep and hydration and doing nothing. Uh, but it might be worth it to <laughs> take a step backwards just so we can have some fun. I know, I know I'm not going to see Jess again for I don't know how long. Anyway, um, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, thanks for all the well wishes from the last video and for well wishing in this video because I know I'm going to get them. I really do appreciate it for all the prayers and stuff. Uh, it does make me feel good to read through the comments and um, feel all the good vibes coming in. But until next time, don't forget to have a good pea soup. And I think today is just going to be one of those days where uh, we just sit inside, warm up, listen to some tunes, and uh, watch the scenery flow past. <laughs> so let's see, what do we got here? Um... Yeah, that's the one. <laughs>